direction No one can pull me out I force them to run from the others I'm running away now It is Ring Respect Radio time, and if you're watching the replay of this, you're watching it for the very first time, and thank you for joining us. It's Ring Respect Radio with the video bros. I'm Bobby Munson, the man beside me. If you didn't hear me earlier, you're going to hear it again. Papa Smokes! Papa Smokes! We had a two-minute interval, but we're back and ready to rock and roll with some Prairie Pro Wrestling. We're back. I'm back. You're back. Everybody's back. And I hope everybody's in the chat for the second half of the show. And we're going to rock with some PPW Nation action tonight, aren't we, Munson? We sure are. We're going to do a bit of a watch along. We're going to talk about the upcoming event. And we got to give away two free tickets to Prairie Pro Wrestling's Love is Dead. Right there. That's the poster for it. We got a big main event match scheduled for that night. It is going to be Saturday, February the 18th, 2023, live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Get your tickets or win them here tonight. Pay attention to what is being said here by myself and Papa Smokes because the answer will be within the stream here to the question. Be the first to answer that question later and you'll get two free tickets. That's two free tickets to the show. Love is dead. And again, that big, pay, big, big, big ticket boy matchup in that big event there, Papa Smokes. We got on one half. El Asesino, and the Prairie Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion of the World, Sheikah Barshabaz. And on the other side, we got the Kelly Bros, Colton Kelly, Cannonball Kelly. They're going to be kicking ass. And again, the stipulation, if one of the Kellys manages to pin the champion, Sheikah Barshabaz, in this tag team matchup, that person will then get a shot at the champion at the next Prairie Pro Wrestling event. Ooh, and that makes the stakes significantly higher in this match. But against Everybody wants to get a match against the longest reigning PPW champion in all of history, Sheik Akbar Shabazz. He's held on to that belt since he won it with an iron grip, and he's not letting anybody have it. Oh, there have been a couple close calls, no question about that. But... Uh, uh, Neither Cannonball Kelly nor Colt Kelly have been able to get the job done yet against Sheik Akbar Shabazz. Now we got a tag team match. Shabazz teaming with El Asesino, the nastiest and most violent heel in all of PPW. We're going we're gonna to have to reinforce the ring for this. There's a lot of beef in that ring. We're going to have to reinforce the venue because the fans are going to go crazy. This match has got a lot of emotion in it, and a lot of buildup, and all those attacks that El Asesino has made on Colton Kelly with the chair, all the things that Sheik Akbar Shabazz has done to uh, Cannonball Kelly, all the sneak attacks with the ladder and everything. There's so much bad blood going into this match, never mind just between two guys, but between all four guys. The, the excitement is going to be electric at this show, Munson. Sure is. And speaking about electric, we're being joined by my brunch buster brother, yeah. Chris Parrish. How are you doing? Glad you're able to join us. And again, you're we're talking about this big tag team main event we got coming up at Prairie Pro Wrestling. And I mean, tag team matchups haven't exactly been a big thing in Prairie Pro Wrestling yet. In fact, we only had our very first tag team matchup at Seasons Beatings in December when Michael Richard Blaze and the Rhinestone Cowboy Stephen Crow ended up teaming up against the team of Son of Irish and Jack Pride. And again, in a surprise turn, Son of Irish picking up the big, big victory for his team in that matchup. Huge pops, folks. That was a great night that night. Absolutely. And Son of Irish has come out as one of the uh, newer talents we've been featuring in PPW out here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And he's come out a couple of, for a few shows now and really put in a good showing. And in this, uh, the debut tag team match for PPW, they made a huge impact and uh, put down the uh, the other team 
in record fashion and uh, the, the fans just eating it up all the way. So the fact that we have a tag team main event on this next show just makes it all the more exciting. It is going to be excitement big time. And again, two of those guys that are in that matchup have locked horns. Again, they locked horns in the big ladder match to determine the Prairie Pro Wrestling Champion. That match right there, Sheik Akbar Shabazz, the champion, and Cannonball Kelly. We're going to start right there, Papa Spokes. We're going to hit the watch along right now. Join us for this. Together and releasing it online, which has uh, been a little bit now, but it's always fun to go back to these Papa Spokes to just check out the, the work that's been done. Again, these two guys always do a kick-ass job. Can't complain about the work that I get out of these guys. Oh, definitely. Two of our top stars by far. And uh, the fact that they came together to do some classic work in the, the match for the first uh, ever awarded PPW Heavyweight Championship. It was just fantastic and uh, couldn't couldn't imagine two better guys for the job. Yeah, and this, I mean, this this all accumulated in this. This was the, the really the first, you know, outside of that uh, non-sanctioned fight that we had between Jacob Creed and Michael Allen Richard Clark, really the first kind of gimmick match that we had in Prairie Pro Wrestling. And this, that second one, a ladder match to finally decide the champion, making these guys climb to the top in order to get that championship. It was very fitting to end this, you know, very long tournament that was halted during the time of COVID, again, we started that time, <laughs> four rounds to the crown in March of 2020, having to shut down temporarily. But again, you can't keep PPW down. We came back stronger than ever. We finished up that tournament. And that man right there, Sheik Akbar Shabazz, ended up going all the way. And you're going to be able to witness that with us tonight. But again, that doesn't take away for anything. Yeah, there we go, bastard. Guy in suit. Guy in suit. Uh, so for anybody watching along, that's watching for the very first time. You haven't seen PPW. You're not familiar with the chance from our fans. Guy in suit would actually be our ring announcer there. That is J.G. Muller, probably one of the best voices in the entire business. I don't think they get much better in terms of ring announcers here on the independent scene. And, man, Sheik <laughs> FRE is not a liked individual by the PPW Nation at all, folks. No, Sheiky is just – look at this heel work right here, like – not giving a good goddamn about the fans. He's got an insult for every single one. He's grabbing signs out of people's hands. People are flipping him the bird, and he just absolutely doesn't care. I love this guy. He does such great work. <laughs> he really does. Sheik Akbar Shabazz, a fantastic talent, a menace inside that ring, and strength beyond belief. Again, we have seen this man lift. Cannonball Kelly up over his head before. The Cannonball Kelly, that is a big mf -er right there. That guy is larger than life in every sense of the word. And we have witnessed Sheik Akbar Shabazz give that crucifix powerbomb to him, throwing his ass right across the entire ring. If we're lucky tonight, we might get to see it again. We just might. And again, this is going to be as cheeky looking straight up there. And that belt, that beautiful belt. I mean, I know we work for the company, but I really do like the design. When that thing came out, that, that was a beaut. Well, you remember that it was a labor of love, too. There was a lot of uh, questions and ideas about the design of that belt. And I'm not really much of a belt guy. I don't really care that much as long as it doesn't look bad in a, a belt in general in its design but the way this one came out it really is a beautiful belt i just love it yeah me too pop. and uh pop smokes well here we go cannibal kelly coming out with johnny two fingers again a uh, great band that these two guys have together johnny two fingers and the deformities and they were gracious enough to join us on ring respect radio as well once too and again, as you can see, my editing mistake that happened more than once in this one. Again, uh, for anybody seeing that right there, picture in picture, what happens there is when I do these shows, I've got three, maybe four cameras worth of footage that we do. And when you do the timeline and put them all together, I usually have the hard cam footage running on the one timeline, but the other one's running with small picture in pictures so that I can decide which angle that I ended up using in the final edit. And every once in a while, you get a late night, your mind slips a little, 
you get to, to these types of ages that we're getting to and you forget to pull one off and you've already gone through it and next thing you know oh shit i probably should have corrected that before finalizing it but hey we all have our bad days and that's mine admitting to it right here I, I, I've effed up a few times when it comes to these edits. Uh, Munson, you've done far more excellent and superior work than any mistakes could count for. Don't, don't ever worry about that, man. You, I know the hours you spend working on this stuff. You do great work. It, uh, it does have it does have some time behind it and everything like that, but it's a labor of love at the same time, Papa Spokes. Again, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it because, again, that's one thing I think people assume that uh, you get into this and that you're uh, going to make it rich by be participating. No, no. <laughs> it's a lot of time spent and a lot of just sitting there and doing it because of your love for the business, love and passion for it and stuff like that. Hoping that people just enjoy it. I mean, that is really my main reason for doing this is to help out those talented individuals inside that ring be seen by people who don't get the opportunity to be within Western Canada where they're seen and at the same time also doing it because I really enjoy putting smiles on faces and if I can do that for you guys as again our bird man coming in saying I, I enjoy the matches every Saturday awesome because that's exactly why I do this I want you to All enjoy right. those matches I want you to be having fun getting in the action here with us as we kick this thing off and again these two big boys they're gonna slug it out with each other no ball coming in. Sheiky, baby. Yeah, that's right. Sheiky. Yeah. Sheiky's fantastic. <laughs> and hate to break kayfabe a little bit, but Sheiky, love that dude. Yeah. Don't always yeah. love his actions in the ring, but I love that dude. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Damn agility, Cannonball Kelly. I mean, <laughs> you talk about a guy that surprised you. He has got an option like that. You never see it coming. Kelly right out the gate. Oh, just, just echoed through the entire building right there. Hey, you just know when you have a match against Cannonball Kelly, it's going to be a certain kind of a night at the office, and you're going to have all those burst blood vessels on your chest, and you're going to have dents in your head, and you're going to have a sore back and all the rest of that stuff because he's a brawler, man, and he'll pull you right into that brawling style. Doesn't matter in the ring, but he's going to take you out of the ring, probably through the concession area, maybe into the parking lot. We've seen all that stuff from Cannonball, and uh, he's an absolute lunatic, and he's not held back by the constraints of having a match in the ring. Look at Johnny Two Fingers interfering here, and he told me he never inserted himself in any matches. Oh, uh, Johnny. I mean, you, you, you can't blame him. I mean, this is championship gold on the line. He's got to insert himself when it matters kind of thing. It's oh, man. Match, he's uh, opening. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bob. Go. He's opening himself up for a, for an attack from the Sheik, though. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's going to be justified if Sheik doesn't. Well, I was going to say, too, and Johnny likes to insert himself into the PPW posters. I thought that the poster for this particular event, which was called the uh, the Hateful Eight, uh, had yeah. the ladder along with some of the boys on the poster. And, of course, Sheiky and Cannonball kind of had, you know, a little larger size beside the ladder. And then Johnny went and photoshopped himself sitting on top of the ladder. Best PPW poster ever once Johnny got his hands on it. <laughs> And that ladder gets tossed right up in that ring there. And again, I, I'm pretty sure, even though I've got this on quiet, that I could still hear Basser echoing his his love for this matchup all through that arena. Man, Basser, you make me smile every time I have to edit these things, even if it's been a late night, because listening to you beat some of the boys and cheer for the ones you love is absolutely addicting. And he's one of the best fans to have at wrestling because he brings energy and he gives it to the wrestlers and the wrestlers give it back. It's 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 infectious, you know. He he helps get the rest of the crowd going because somebody's got to start it with the energy. Yeah, yeah, man. Never change because you you bring uh, energy to the crowd and and everybody appreciates that. It makes the whole show better. Yeah, I mean, we missed you last month at season beatings again. You you missed out on the epic <laughs> first ever tag match in, in PBW history, but you're going to be there at the next one. I know you are. In fact, I know you're you're, you're salivating at the thought because you have an opportunity to win tickets here tonight. 
That opportunity coming up very soon. Make sure you're subscribed to our local establishment and Prairie Pro Wrestling on YouTube. It'll be the first to answer the question later in the program. And you will win two free tickets to Prairie Pro Wrestling Presents Love is Dead on Saturday, February the 18th. Man, that is going to be an electric event. And, you know, we were talking about Son of Irish earlier. He's got a scheduled matchup against Saskatoon's own Rocket Shoes, Tony Novak, that night. That could be some really good stuff because those are two fast, agile guys. I'm looking forward to that one as well. Now he's going to build something. That ring is not going to be in the same shape it was when we put it together after this one. Love is dead or love perishes. <laughs> nice touch. Come on. Yeah. What are you doing on February 18th, Mr. Parrish? Yeah. Your, 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 your tag partner, your partner in crime there from Alberta, son of Irish. He's going to be down here. Yeah, hop in. <laughs> we got Bassard. Tony. <laughs> oh, Bassard, you're going you're gonna to real, you're going to make Tony mad one of these days. You're going to snap on your ass. That's thrill for some of our great fans in the front row there, too. Oh, man, this is going to get ugly right here again. You're talking about the brawling style of Cannonball Kelly. You got Sheik's damn head right up against that lap. Oh, oh, Sheik got out just in time. I love that shirt, that handmade shirt, that Johnny Two Fingers of the Deformities T-shirt that he's turned around and written, Bite Me, Sheik, right across the back of it. Yeah. Or Bite It, Sheik. Sorry, Bite It, Sheik. Yeah, so anybody who gets an opportunity after this, go check out Johnny Two Fingers and the Deformities. I'm pretty sure they got some work up on YouTube. Check them out. Great guys. They were fun. They were blast to have on our show. And the uh, Cannonball's the drummer. Yeah, yeah, he really is. I mean, yeah, he bring he brings the thunder. <laughs> it's a good thing we had two ladders on hand because man. <laughs> You never, you never know what might happen to one of those ladders in a matchup like this. Especially when you got a brawler like Cannonball Kelly involved. Nothing is safe. I mean, I even felt it the one time, too, when he was just getting up from uh, a beatdown that she gave him down at ringside, and he comes flying towards me. I got I got smacked into the side of the ring that night, Papa folks. I didn't feel the same for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you get roughed up a little bit at ringside. I, I, I always have to uh, have a little chuckle, uh, I, you know, after I finish being concerned for you. You remember the one time, too. I mean, I was called right into that ring when we were working with HIW there. Los Rudos did not like some of the stuff that I was uh, I was saying about them at the time. I was I was that close to getting a beat up for Mel Asesino if they had not been for uh, Jeff and Bucky that night, I, I would have been a dead man. Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, shocking events when we were just trying to work camera at ringside, and then all of a sudden, Asino saying, We want Bobby Munson in the ring right now. I was like, Oh shit, because I knew you'd been chirping them on Twitter and various other places. And uh, yeah, the, the, you were pretty lucky that night, Munson. I know you had a had a wet stain in the front of your pants after that particular scenario. Well, you always bring an extra pair to each and every show, Pop folks, just in case you never know what might happen. Stuff happens. <laughs> I mean, we're down there at Ringstar for quite some time. I mean, it's it's tough. But again, you know what makes filming Cannonball tough? And we talk, you talked about, like, you never know when this guy's going to end up and <laughs> Passer brings extra shirts he sure does yeah yeah oh love you well, love when you have all those shirts you gotta have the, the, the different shirts on this time around too man it's gonna be fantastic but what makes filming cannonball so difficult is that he is that brawler so you never know where he's gonna end up and we've seen it yeah the concession stand the audience all over the place it makes it hard to keep up and especially we've got those safety barriers around at ringside to keep the fans separated from the ring and the action going on just a little bit and everything and trying to leap one of those damn things while trying to chase down cannibal kelly i don't know where the guy gets his energy from it is outstanding oh it's nuts and you talk about doing camera work at the side like that is tough down there sometimes it, it's okay if the match stays in the ring but once it's out there 
all bets are off, man. And you and I have filmed a number of Cannonball Kelly matches and some other wild brawls. And uh, and it's difficult trying to get the shot at the same time as trying to not get in the way of the spot and trying to preserve your own livelihood while these huge behemoth men are being tossed around everywhere. That last battle royal we had to film, I thought I was going to die. I tried to find a safe spot behind the uh, the ring bell table there, and uh, even that wasn't safe. I had masses of humanity getting thrown out all around me. And there is nothing safe about a 300-pound man taking a back body drop onto a freaking ladder. That's insane. Cool. Oh. See by the spastic motions of his arms that he could have. Now Sheik's got some real evil intent as he getting that ladder set up in the corner there. Again, I mean, Sheik, he's another guy. He's just going to stop at nothing to make sure that he walks out victorious. I mean, he will do anything and everything. And he is one of the best because of it. This guy is, you know, a decorated champion all over Western Canada. And I'm sure that wherever his travels take him, this guy is going to win belts everywhere he goes. Yeah, and and look at him. He looks like a wrestler. He's done the work. He's got a good build. He's six foot four, two hundred and twenty-five, thirty pounds. He's obviously done quite a bit of bodybuilding and uh he completely looks the part. He's got a good promo and all that stuff, and he's got the sheet gimmick going on. It's just so excellent and uh his presentation is a hundred percent serious and uh and he, he's, I'm proud to have him as champion, even though he is nefarious and uh, using all kinds of, of uh, greasy tactics to hold on to his belt. I'm still proud to have a guy like Sheik because he's a, he's a real wrestler in a, in a world where there aren't so many real wrestlers anymore. You bet he is. But again, no wrestling on display here necessarily. It is all brawl and all pain. And as you see, the cut arm of Cannonball Kelly ended up getting caught up in that ladder when she threw him into the corner, slicing that arm right open. And man, that color is coming through beautifully. Cannonball Kelly managed to still find something using that damaged arm to fight back against the sheep. And just slugging it out. These two have really taken some hits in this matchup. You can really see the fatigue is starting to kick in with these two men at this point. Oh, yeah. Not to mention, they've taken some big hits into some furniture and all that. Now, uh, Cannonball Kelly's got an unexpected ripped open arm from flinging into the corner into that metal ladder. And uh, I know it's probably not going to. Oh, wow. Sheiky always thinking of two steps ahead. I'll say Cannonball's down. Bloody, he's dazed right now, and she got Carl Chavez. He's got to use this time to make look at that. Oh, no, now Kelly's even draining from his forehead as well, too. Man, he is looking awful out there, Pop Smokes. Oh, man, and they got to be careful that those ladders don't end up in a month. We wouldn't want any of our great fans getting hurt at ringside, that's for damn sure. I still think this is Cannonball's bread. You can hear him just electric with a PP dub. PP dub. I love when the nation starts screaming. I love the chants, man. The chants are fantastic. I mean, you guys, I, I know for a fact that the boys love coming here and performing for you every single time because you guys are so electric. Whether you're being rude or whether you're being helpful to the ones you love, it, it makes a difference. And we're glad that you guys are the, probably one of the most vocal crowds in professional wrestling. That's so true. And for all the people that watch on, on YouTube and the Twitch and the various other places where we show PPW's matches, it's 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 great, but it still doesn't quite capture the the excitement and the electricity of of being there live, and you can see that it's not that big of a venue, but it's absolutely packed with people, and we have all the time the same fans. <laughs> we have we have lots of return fans, lots of new people too, but our fans know the roster. They've got the chance for everybody. They love to yell their heads off and drink some beer. It's such a good time. Uh, everybody always says, 
when there's a wrestling show on, a PPW show, there's nothing more entertaining to do in the city that night than that. And I, I'm being a wrestling guy. I fully believe that. Uh oh. Oh. Check his oil. You know, it's funny, Bastard, that you bring this uh, this chant up. Check his oil, which uh, pertains to Joey Vendetta. We actually just got done calling a Joey Vendetta matchup earlier tonight, where the oil dipstick is actually pulled out of his shorts and then used uh, to whip him as a result before the matchup starts. So it's uh, that's where that whole uh, chant comes from for Joey Vendetta is he tends to have different weapons hiding on him, and one of those happens to be an oil dipstick from a vehicle. And that's where the chant check his oil comes from, from the PPW Nation. Victory on his BIPOC folks. This could be it. Cheekak Marshabaz is down after that maneuver on the ladder on the outside. But you can see the Sheik is trying to clear the And this match has got, you know, I mean, this this has been a huge thing. Uh, I should mention Sheikak Marshabaz has done great as the champion uh, and everything like that. He's had a lot of great opponents again, too. He's uh, fought the likes of both his opponents on the opposite side of him coming up in Love is Dead. Both Cannonball Kelly and Colton Kelly have had chances at Sheik Akbar. And also, young Tommy Gallivan, who is a, a graduate of the PPW Academy, has also had a crack at Sheik's championship belt. And Sheik always managed to find a way to come out on top. Well, even Gallivan, that a lot of people didn't think maybe he was ready for a, a heavyweight championship match, really stepped it up. I mean, he wrestled a match of his life against Sheik Shabazz. You could tell that this kid knew that this could be the biggest match of his career. Getting a title shot in PPW, he was going to make the best of it, and he did. And what a match he had. He actually pushed Sheik Shabazz somewhat to his limits and uh, really gave the Sheik a hard time. Wanted that belt so, so badly, but the Sheik's a wily character, and he's going to hold on to that belt as long as he can. He's going to keep it in his death grip. And yes, and as uh, Astrid's hopping in to give a quick hello Hi, Astrid. to Astrid. And again, Astrid is going to be going live here very, very shortly over at her Twitch channel, where her and Cody are going to be talking all about Impact Wrestling. So again, make sure that you check out that show here, Make It an Impact, coming up very, very soon. Uh, we will be probably concluding just after this matchup and our giveaway. So again, stay tuned if you're wanting to get in on those PPW tickets because at the conclusion of this matchup, Papa folks, I think it's question time because I know the answer is out there. If you've been paying attention, it's definitely out there. Oh, boy, some lucky fan is going to get the, the best thing you can get for a PPW fan, two free tickets to February 18th, the big show coming up, and uh, I'm really excited. And it's fun to watch some uh, one of the classic matches of PPW while we're doing this contest. What could be more fitting? It's going to be awesome. That's for damn sure. <laughs> we got uh, Bastard coming in. If I don't get, if I don't win, I'll get Doyle hot dog tickets. It's all. Good. <laughs> and again, this is a, something else we should explain. So anybody who isn't ever here in a live capacity, uh, one of the other super fans that's known for very, very vocal sounding chants would be the big man Doyle, the man in the very colorful suit. And he has created what is known as the Mike McSugar Wiener Eaters Club of Saskatchewan. There is different chapters based on different cities. And what this essentially is, is fans of pro wrestler out here, Mike McSugar, who eat hot dogs together. They see how many pictures of them eating hot dogs they can get. It's become a fun little prairie pro wrestling tradition now, whether Mike McSugar's on the card or not. To have the PPW Nation at intermission go outside and Doyle buys everybody a hot dog and he gets a picture with him and some of the wrestlers. It's a great time. And that's what <laughs> Johnny's in trouble. That hot dog eating society is one of the fun things about PPW shows is because at, uh, I like to call it halftime, I guess it's called intermission. But uh, everybody goes outside, has a cigarette, has a smoke, whatever, uh, stretches their legs and gets some fresh air. But that Doyle gets so many hot dogs for everybody, and then everybody has their hot dog, poses for a picture. It kind of brings the fans together to do one thing together, you know, no matter where you're sitting in the venue or no matter 
who you're cheering for or cheering against. You can come out and have a hot dog and meet some other fans at, at, at the break. And I just think it's kind of a, a, a fun thing for the fans to do. Oh, oh good Lord. <laughs> it never gets easier to watch. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Holy smokes is right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, being right there, right in that shot, I mean, it gets it gets a little nerve-wracking down at ringside because you never know something flies the wrong direction or anything like that. I'm always trying to be aware of my surroundings as well, too. As she climbs that ladder, I don't think Cannibal gets up from this one. That's for damn sure. He is out of it, and that's how Sheik Akbar Shabazz comes the very first and only Prairie Pro Wrestling Champion of Ann. What a matchup it was. What a night that was. And again, Sheiky has been killing it ever since as the champion of Prairie Pro Wrestling. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed watching that with us. Um, you know, let us know. Would you like to see more Prairie Pro Wrestling watch-alongs and things of that nature here on Ring Respect Radio on the second half of the double feature on Thursday nights? I think we can do more dedicated PPW shows every once in a while, Pop Smokes. I think this was quite successful i think so too and i i like that 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 we started with that match because that night and that match are, are special in my heart because uh it was such a long journey to get there and, and you remember that you and i did commentary and and video work for the for the previous company that ran in town and then when that kind of went downhill you know we were a little bit dis disheartened and and kind of scrambling to think what can we get doing and then the the germ of an idea started for ppw amongst you and i and some other people and uh then that started getting going then you know so long raising funds and, and everything else to get ppw going and then massive success the first few shows three four shows and then covid hits and just completely derailed us and we couldn't run for more than a year yeah and that was just it took the wind out of everybody's sails it was such a downer it was such a kick in the balls and uh just to come back and finish that tournament for the first champion to have the belt all that time but nobody wearing it was just so frustrating and then we we couldn't do the matches and we couldn't have our good time and and keep making all our our original uh wrestling content and yeah it was just a it was a dead zone of a time and it was difficult and uh just the way we got through it and then that night crowning the first ever champion handing that belt seeing a sheik holding it up in the ring was just like Oh, we finally got there, but it took a lot longer than we thought it was going to, but we got there. That's why that match and that, that evening were special to me. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, Papa Spokes. And thank you. Speaking of special, we're going to give a giveaway. It's giveaway time. We've been promising it all show. We've been seeing all the advertising for it. It's time to give away two tickets to Prairie Pro Wrestling Presents Love is Dead Live Saturday. February 18th, live in Saskatoon. So all of you people who are able to make it out that want that opportunity, pay attention, because I've said it earlier. The big main event of Love is Dead is a tag team matchup. Name the only other tag team matchup that we have had in Prairie Pro Wrestling. Who were the four wrestlers involved in that particular matchup? I will give you all a minute or two here, and we'll see if somebody could come up with that answer. First one to answer it is going to win those tickets to Prairie Pro Wrestling Presents Love is Dead. So, again, we're just going to wait and see if we can find ourselves a winner here, Papa Smokes, because I'm sure somebody, one of our great fans, is just, they're, they're thinking right now. They're scratching their head. <laughs> LOL, Doyle takes for, oh, he did, you didn't pay attention, Bastard. Well, geez, if I don't get an answer here in just a few more moments, I might have to change the question. Oh, well, we got someone coming in with a, with a name. Oh, <laughs> oh, maybe it's too tough to have all four months. In it might be tough to have all four. Maybe I, maybe I need a different <laughs> question. <laughs> it's almost unfair at that point again, too, so. 
Um, how about this? We'll try this because again, Pablo, I thank you for joining us as well, too. I'm really glad that you came in and uh, you did get one of the combatants. We were looking for all four. Um, but again, Pablo, if you're in, if you're interested in getting those tickets, if you could name me the other three quickly, I'll give it to you. Otherwise, I'm going to change the question in just a quick moment here. Uh, so I'll give you another about, say, 20, 30 seconds here to see if you can come up with the other three. If not, uh, we will move on to a secondary question, which will involve Love is Dead, actually, because I got one for that one all lined up here. So we'll just wait it out for just a few more seconds here. And yes, uh, Basser, I did tell you to smoke at halftime, but the answer was actually there while we were talking during the matchup. <laughs> so you have no excuses other than the fact that maybe you just uh, smoked a little too much and did, couldn't pay attention anymore. I mean, yeah, that's the only real excuse that you got. He's lifting weights in the garage instead of listening. <laughs> that's right. He's man caving it up right now. All right. Anyway, so I'm seeing uh, Pablo not quite sure. Okay. I'm going to change this up for you guys. I'm going to get one more opportunity and see if uh, anyone can come up with this one. So we have the tag team main event coming up at Love is Blind. On one side, you've got the champion, Sheik Akbar Shabazz and El Asesino. The other side, Colton Kelly and Cannonball Kelly. What is the big stipulation in the matchup? All right. All right. The answer should be there, too. I know I said this one as well. So think about it for a moment. Let me know what that stipulation is, and you could be going to Love is Blind absolutely free of charge. I'll give it a moment. Otherwise, I'm not sure how we're going to play this one, Pop Smokes. I, I, I'm not too sure just yet, but we'll see. We'll see if we can get an answer there. You need oh, a drum I, I, We might have it here, right here. If the Kelly Bros pin the champ, they get a future championship matchup. Our Birdman 15. All right. Congratulations. You just won two free tickets to Prairie Pro Wrestling Presents Love is Blind. Uh, what I'm going to need for you, I believe that you know Pop Smokes. So Pop Smokes, either uh, you can provide me the information or uh, just make sure that you get your information to us about the na your name and the name of who is going to be joining you. And you will be on the list. Just check in at the door when you come in. Give your names. And you have two free tickets courtesy of Prairie Pro Wrestling and the Video Bros. And we really, really appreciate you coming in and being able to answer that one. Uh, Pablo Spanish, I, you were so close on the original question. I, I know you had Son of Irish down there. And I do apologize that you didn't quite get it all. But do hope that you'll still come join us on February the 18th. In a live capacity, it'll be great. And we know Bastard's going to be there as well, too. We're hoping to pack the place. But, Papa Smokes, I think we're coming to an end of the show there. So why don't you tell the good people, whoever it is, they can reach out to good old Papa Smokes. All right. If I'm online, I'm partying with Elon Musk in his free speech wonderland known as Twitter. I'm at Smokes underscore Papa. And on Twitch, I am at... Papa underscore smokes underscore. Wonderful stuff. That's where you can find Papa Smokes again. You can find me all throughout our local establishment with shows here. Uh, we've got beats and beat downs on Wednesday nights. We got, of course, fusion and ring respect on Thursday nights. And of course, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You can check out myself and Chris Parrish bringing you busting out. And again, this weekend, we've got a very special guest joining us as we tend to like to do this particular guy is heel kevin and we're going to be joining his channel in just a moment we're going to be reading over there if you're watching on youtube you will stick with us for the duration as we go out but we are heading on over to see heel kevin right now make sure you give him a big ole from all of our friends here in our local establishment and make sure to tune in with myself and chris Parrish this coming sunday for busted out with mr heel kevin we're heading on over there now and as I said, if you are joining us right now on YouTube, we thank you for tuning in. Appreciate everything that you do for us. We will see you again next Thursday night, and we look forward to more time spent with you. Take care. We'll see you real soon. Bye, everyone.